Hey, gorgeous soul, and welcome to another episode of New Age Hipster Radio, the podcast. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you three things that you need to know and you need to be doing in order to take your card reading to the next level. So whether you're reading Oracle cards or tarot cards, this is going to help you kind of go from, okay, I can do a three card reading for myself to now I'm really doing it. You know, now I'm really getting that guidance and I know what to, um, I know what I need to do next and I know where I'm going and really using the cards as this powerful, powerful tool to help you live a better life, right? Because that's ultimately what we want to do when we're working with cards. So often these tools can kind of just become this thing that's like, oh, cute little oracle deck or tarot deck in the corner. Pull it out sometimes and it's a bit of fun, but is it helping you? Is it changing your life in amazing positive ways? Yes, it can be if you do these three things. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a little bit of a solo ramble today. I'm your host, Vix, uh, also known as Victoria Maxwell. I am the author of Witch Please, Manifest Your Dreams, The Angels Among Us, Oracle, The Goddesses Among, Among Us Oracle, The Santolsa Saga, my YA young adult romance fiction trilogy, and the new book, Oracle Card Companion. This is coming out in October. You can pre-order it now. If you're listening to this in October, go and have a look. Oracle Card Companion, written by me, Victoria Maxwell, and published by Rockpool. Some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you today are from this book. I'm going to make a video over on YouTube at some point with a whole bunch more info about what's in the book. But basically it's everything that you need to know to really advance your card reading practice. So whether you just want to be able to do kind of more intuitive readings and be able to become more confident in your readings and trust yourself and trust what you're getting, or whether you really want to take it to the next level and you want to start doing spells with your oracle cards, manifesting with your oracle cards, doing bigger spreads, even reading for other people. Everything that you need to know is in this book. So the three things I want to share with you today. The first one is who are you asking when you are working with your cards? When you sit down to commune with the cards, who are you asking? So often we hear these phrases and we say these phrases ourselves, things like, I'm going to ask the cards, as if the cards are the thing that provides the answers. The cards aren't the things that provides the answers, the cards are just the tool. And I always kind of liken it to you, the way you use your phone, right? Your phone is essentially a tool. You pick up your phone, you type in a number, or you go to Instagram and you look for the account that you want to message or whatever, but you're doing some kind of action, right? You're looking for the specific person that you want to connect with, that you want to communicate with, whether it's someone that you're calling, someone that you're messaging, you go into your phone and you find that person and then you type the message. You don't just pick up the phone <clears throat> and start talking to the phone as if the phone is the thing right? Like the phone is the tool to get you to be able to communicate with whoever it is that you want to communicate with. And oracle cards, tarot cards, any divination tool is essentially the same thing. What we're doing here is we're using this tool as a kind of a phone line to tap into something else, whether it is divine guidance, divine wisdom, your own intuition, your own inner knowing, it doesn't really matter what you perceive this as. Uh, that's not, you know, that's kind of irrelevant. Like I know people who contact their spirit guides and angels using the cards. That's me. I do that. Uh, I know people who just kind of feel like they're tapping into their inner knowing, like they're connecting with what they already know to be true on some level, like the subconscious part of themselves. I know people who use Oracle and Tarot to connect with specific deity, uh, ancestors, their higher self, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who or what you feel that it is, but what's really, really helpful when you are preparing yourself for a reading is that you know who you're communicating with. 
otherwise, you know, it's like picking up your phone and speaking to the phone and hoping that, you know, you haven't butt dialed the wrong person. Essentially what we're doing when we don't know who we're talking to, when we're, when we're doing our divination practices, we're just butt dialing. <laughs> it's like you can get anybody on the other, the other end of the line. And I'm not saying that to like scare you that, you know, are oh, you going to contact some weird spirit that's not going to have your best interests at heart? Um, you know, that's not very likely. But what is likely if you don't know who you're connecting with, you're just going to have a really fuzzy connection. You're just going to really struggle to have a communication and that's what we're really doing with the the cards when we pull cards it's all about having this communication with your higher self divine guidance whatever it is we're opening up this portal of communication we're asking questions we're bringing our deepest darkest most confused parts of ourselves to the table so we really want to know that whoever is receiving this, whoever's picking up on the other end of the line, is somebody that can really help us, somebody that has our best interest at heart. So it's going to be totally different for everybody. You know, for me, it depends on the day. Guides and angels is always, you know, I always call them my guides and angels, but depending on the day, I might go for uh, a specific deity. Uh, this morning, I sat down with Thoth and had a little bit of a chat. So, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. It just matters that you, you sit down and you say, okay, today as I'm doing my reading, I would like to connect with, or my intention is to connect with my higher self. And then you can say, higher self, please help me with this. Here's my question, etc." So the second thing, let's go on to questions. I was going to talk about the I'll, I'll do it in a different order. But the second thing is, okay, how do you ask a question? What kind of questions do you want to be asking when you're working with Oracle cards? Of course, this is totally up to you. <laughs> there aren't really any rules at all, uh, but there are things that you may find make your life easier and make your card reading experience just much more empowering and useful and helpful. And really how you formulate your questions is really, really essential. Uh, a lot of us, we go into our readings with like, with questions that are just not necessarily suitable for a card reading. <laughs> uh, and this happens a lot to me as a professional reader. And people will come to me with their question and what I usually do for most people is I say, okay, this is your question. Can we reformulate it a little bit just so that we can really get to the core? We can really get to the answer that you really want here. So an example of like a bad question or something not to ask the, the ask the cards, not to ask the universe or your guides or your, your, uh, your higher self, your inner wisdom are questions like, what is happening with someone else? You know, why you know, is my is my partner cheating on me? This is a question that so many people come to readers, professional readers with is is this person cheating on me? If that's your question, there's a lot of other things to be looking at. Yeah. <laughs> so you can reframe that. What I would do is I would reframe that to what do I most need to know about this relationship? Is this relationship really serving and supporting me? Is this relationship really the right relationship for me? What do I need? What do I most need to know about this relationship right now? Rather than just a yes or no question about is somebody, you know, what is this person doing behind my back? So I personally don't really like yes or no questions. Uh, I know a lot of readers will do a yes or no question. They quite enjoy them. I find that they're they aren't always that helpful, especially in a situation like this, right? Is my boyfriend cheating on me? Yes or no? You might pull over an oracle card or a tarot card that very much feels like it's a yes or very much feels like it's a no. And then it's like, okay, well, you've got your answer, but what are you going to do with that? 
you know, what are you going to do with that? You've got this opportunity here to sit with your higher self, to sit with your spirit guides and your angels and your own deepest inner wisdom. Don't you want to ask more? <laughs> Don't you want to know, okay, so now what? Uh, rather than just getting your yes and no question and off you go, it's like you have this beautiful you know, space, you have this beautiful opportunity to really ask some deeper questions here, like, you know, what do I need to know about this relationship? Um, and pulling cards on that can open up a whole lot of other stuff and it can give you a whole lot of other guidance that, you know, maybe you wouldn't get, well, you definitely wouldn't get with just a yes or no question. So my personal opinion on this is avoid yes or no questions. Um, that again, you know, it's a preference thing, but for me, I like to sit with my guides and get a real overview <laughs> of what's going on <clears throat> in a situation rather than just, you know, will I get this job? Yes or no? Okay, but that doesn't mean it's the right job for you. You know, will I get this job? Um, and this is one of the questions that I asked many, many years ago before I became a professional reader. And I asked this question to a reader and that I had found online <clears throat> and I asked her am I going to get this job and she wrote back and she said yes um, there was a few bits of other information in there but generally the gist was yes you will get this job so I was like okay cool I'm gonna get the job <laughs> um, I didn't get the job <laughs> I didn't get the job but what did happen was in telling a friend, my dear, dear friend Hope, about the situation that I got this reading from somebody on Etsy and I asked about this job and she said I was going to get it and I didn't get it. Uh, my, my friend Hope said to me, like, why are you even asking other people for readings when you're so good at readings? You should be doing readings for people. So, you know, I always feel like, and this is going off topic a little bit, but I always feel like you get the reading that you need even if it's not an accurate reading, right? So that whole thing led me onto this path of doing readings for other people and doing spiritual work for, for others and for a living. So it was kind of magical. But that question, <laughs> am I gonna get the job? You know, there would have been an easier way around that. I could have asked, uh, <clears throat> what do I most need to know about this job? What do I most need to know about my career? Am I moving forward in you know, is this career path in alignment with my best and highest good? What do I need to know about that? So I'm a big fan of kind of opening up the door on these questions, finding your question and then just kind of figuring out for yourself, what is it that you really want to know actually? If, you're, if you think your partner's cheating on you and you come to a reader or you, you come to your own cards and you ask this question, is my partner cheating on me? You know, what do you really want to know? Do you really want just that yes or no answer to that question? Or do you really want to know, is this relationship right for me? Should I be in this relationship? You know, like, what do I need to know about staying in this relationship or leaving the relationship? And then you can do some big spreads for yourself. You can pull a whole bunch of cards for yourself on that. And you can start to kind of look at things, the big picture of what's really going on and you can start to see some of your options and you can look at well if I go this way this could be a potential outcome if I go that way this this may happen so that's another thing that I would like to add into the question conversation many people want to know what's going to happen and card reading oracle or tarot has a real reputation for being a fortune telling tool in which you can sit down and pull some cards and you can see your future. And to me, that's a very old school kind of way of working with oracles and tarot decks. You can do it, it can be useful. There can be times when it's useful. I know people who do read like that and it can be very helpful and empowering for people if it's done in a certain way. It can also be very disempowering for people if it is not done, <laughs> if it is not done in a really beautiful, compassionate kind of way. Um, if it's not done in a way where 
the querent, the person coming from the read reading is told, you know, you can change this. <laughs> and one thing I find really interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, is that so many people in spirituality have this belief about the law of attraction and manifestation. We really believe that we can make things happen in our lives, but yet when it comes to working with the cards, we sit there and we ask what's going to happen as if we're just completely giving over all of our power to the deck of cards. Tell me what's going to happen. And it just fascinates me because we, you know, in the same breath, we'd be like, oh, law of attraction, manifestation. But, oh, hey, you're a card reader. Tell me what's going to happen. Um, and I just think we need to let that go. We need to let that go. There are things in life that we can't control. There are things that may be destined to happen regardless of our actions. However, for the most part, we get to make the choice and we get to make the change and we get to decide what our future is going to look like, maybe within reason. You know, like I always like to say, I'm probably not going to be an astronaut. I'm probably not going to be a, an Olympic gymnast, you know, at this point in my life. Like, <clears throat> let's look at our situation and be, you know, somewhat kind of realistic about it. But that doesn't mean I can't do a heck of a lot with what I have, right? So with whatever you have, you can do a heck of a lot with that. So asking, asking the cards what you should do um, or what's going to happen, this is just, in my humble opinion, it's just a bad idea. What you can do is you can ask for a potential outcome. And this is something I do quite often. There was a time when I wouldn't even ask for potential outcomes because I just felt like, you know, I didn't want to go there at all. But now I'm pretty happy to do a, a reading that has a potential outcome. And we can kind of look at, you know, for you, if you come for a reading with me or for me when I'm reading for myself, we can look at, okay, this is where we're at. This is the situation, something going on in your relationship. What's the potential outcome here? And we can see usually, and you don't always need a, a deck to tell you this, right? But like, if you continue down a certain path, it's like, this is the, the most likely outcome. This is what may happen. Uh, so, you know, if you can continue down this path in this relationship with this person that you think is cheating on you, the most likely outcome is we don't have to even have a deck in our hands to <laughs> figure out what that is, right? The most likely outcome is either that you will leave them because you're not happy or that you will try and stay in this relationship and you probably still won't be happy. So unless there's a change of some sort, right? And that's why divination is so powerful and so exciting because you can pull cards and you can have a look at, well, what could I do? to fix this or to change this or to find out what's going on, you know? And then you can see, um, you know, examples like, okay, well, maybe if you really open up to them and you can start to kind of improve the conversation between you, maybe things will shift. If you go to some couples therapy, maybe things will shift. You know, we can start to look at some ways that we can, we can shift the, the energy and we can get you to ultimately the outcome that you want. And that is one of the things that I'm so, so passionate about when it comes to card reading. I'm not in the business of just telling you what's going to happen. I'm in the business of helping you get the outcome that you want. So when you're asking questions, when you're asking questions with your cards, think about how you're formulating your question. A question I like to ask that kind of covers everything is just what do I most need to know about this specific thing? What do I most need to know about my relationship? What do I most need to know about this course that I want to take? What do I most need to know about my career right now? And you can get more specific with that, of course. What do I most need to know about this promotion that's potentially on the table for me? What do I most need to know about this book idea? What do I most need to know about this new person that I met? You know, you can get really specific about it, but just a what do I most need to know is, is a fantastic way to make sure that you're really 
opening up the space. You're opening up for the guidance, for the best and highest guidance to come through. And that's another thing that you, that you can do as well. And it's something that I do all the time and I wasn't gonna include this in this video, but let's add that in. Uh, whenever I'm doing a reading for myself or for others, before I ask my question and shuffle the cards, I always just set the intention that may everything that comes through in the reading be in alignment with my best and highest good. May everything be in alignment with the best and highest good of all. And when you do that, you're really just setting this beautiful intention of like, you know, this is, this is for the best and highest good. This isn't for my own ego gratification. I'm not here just to be told everything's going to work out in your favor. You know, it's like I'm here to really just hear what's going to be most helpful for me at this time that's really going to serve a positive purpose in my life and in the lives of others. And the third thing that I wanted to share with you, which really I should have talked about at the very beginning, but I kind of just jumped off there, is preparing your energy for a reading. And this is something that so many people don't do. There's been plenty of times in the past where I haven't done it. I do it all the time now. I would, I would never not do it on some level. Uh, but really preparing your energy and making sure you're in a good space energetically before you do a reading for yourself and definitely before you do the reading for anybody else. Uh, so how do you do that? There's a couple of things that you can do. Well, there's many, many different ways you can do this really, but generally what you want to do is you want to get your energy centered and you want to make sure that you're feeling like you're in your body, you want to ground your energy, clear your energy and protect your energy. And you also want to set some intentions and that intention that we just talked about, may everything that comes through in this reading be in alignment with my best and highest good is another way to prepare your energy really. So what happens when we don't do this is we often get readings that are kind of chaotic, they're muddled uh, and we're not in a good place to receive the guidance and I don't know about you but I've definitely done readings in the past where I have shuffled my deck I've asked my question I've shuffled my deck pulled a card and either didn't like it <laughs> didn't think it made sense um, didn't get it like you know I just didn't understand what it was trying to say so I shuffled again and pulled another card pulled another card pulled another card until I found one that answered my question in the way that I wanted my question answered or answered, in the que uh, answered my question clearly enough for me to understand. If you're ever in a situation where you're doing that, where you are shuffling card after card and nothing's really making sense, nothing is like the answer that you want, uh, it's a really good idea to stop because <laughs> you're not gonna get anywhere doing that. Trust me, I know. Uh, it's a good idea to stop, pause, put the cards down, and center yourself, ground yourself, just come back into, into your body. So there's a really, there's in the book, there's many um, tips and tricks for how to prepare your energy, but essentially you just wanna do something that centers you. Uh, and one thing that I like to do is I usually visualize a light coming in and just clearing me, and then I visualize a light surrounding me and I visualize light growing out of my feet like roots into the earth beneath me and anchoring me. And then I just kind of sit for a few moments in this pillar of light, this bubble of light, and I just kind of take a few breaths. This is also a really good way to center your energy, to take a few breaths and just be in your body, be in this space, and then set those intentions for for how you want your reading to go, what you want to, to happen in your reading. Another thing that I like to do as well is that I set the intention that I'm stepping outside of my ego state and I would never do a reading for anybody else without doing that part. Um, but it can be very useful to also do it when you're reading for yourself because sometimes we get so caught up in our own ego, our own idea of what we want to see in the cards. You know, we ask these questions, um, what do I most need to know about my career? And we want to see 
success and money and <laughs> everything going really well, you know, and then we can turn, turn cards over and it's like, okay, here we've got some things that maybe aren't what we thought we were going to see or what we wanted to see. And that can be challenging. So if you start your reading from this place of, I'm stepping outside of my ego state and ego is kind of a heavy word. Uh, a lot of people have their own ideas about what ego means and it can mean very different things in very different situations. For me, when I say I'm stepping outside of my ego state, what I'm really saying is I'm stepping outside of my own stuff you know, my own, my own bullshit, essentially, <laughs> like my own human programming, my own uh, human belief systems and ideas. And I'm stepping out of that into a space that is really essentially just like non-judgmental, that is a higher kind of frequency, that is a space where I'm able to look at things for myself and my clients from a perspective of, okay, my personal opinion or experience isn't going to get in the way here. I'm just going to be like a clear channel for divine guidance to come through. And that has made my reading so much better, <laughs> so much better. All of these things, all of these three things have made my readings so, so much better. And I see so many people and I've done this myself when I've got my, gotten my first decks as well where we're just, we're so excited and we're such, in such a, such a hurry to be able to connect with the energy, to be able to get the answers that we want, that we don't stop and do these things before we just go into the deck, we just start pulling cards. We just start asking questions and pulling cards. We don't know who we're talking to. Our energy isn't centered. And the questions that we're asking are like a little bit sometimes unhinged, let's just say. <laughs> so, you know, imagine that you have, when you sit down with your deck of cards, imagine that you're really going into this sacred space. You're really going into this sacred space with divine, the divine, whatever that is for you, whether it's something within yourself, whether it's something outside of yourself that comes to give you the information, maybe it's both. Uh, you know, see this as a sacred thing because it is this is you communing with God right whatever you know whatever your understanding of your personal understanding of God is um, maybe you choose not to use that word I know I know it can be triggering for people but it's it's you talking to the universe and so you you know don't take it lightly and that's not to say you can't have fun with it but, you know, when we just grab the deck and we rip it open and we just start pulling cards and we ask about anything and ev everything, we don't often get really good guidance that way. And just like if you walked into someone's house and you just like started <laughs> going through their stuff, <laughs> asking random questions, you know, it's a little bit like, okay, let's just pause. and stop like you came over to my house for for a chat right so let's <laughs> sit down have a cup of tea let's have a chat talk about what's on your mind so this these things will have a huge huge impact on your card reading and if you're not already doing them they may potentially have like a massive impact on your on your card reading and these things as well they don't just impact your card reading in positive ways they impact your whole life in positive ways because when you start to be more intentional with your card reading you can tune in better to your intuition to your guides and angels and when you start to tune in better with them when you're doing readings for yourself you start to tune in better with them everywhere all the time and that was one of the things that I love about the book, plug for the book, Oracle Card Companion, is that, yes, this is a book about how to read Oracle cards, but in the process of doing the practices that are in the book, of the in the process of practicing your readings and centering your energy and really thinking about your question before you ask and really knowing who you're asking, this can just take your, your intuition to a completely, you know, completely next level. And when our intuition is on point, this is when life gets really fun. <laughs> and it's when life gets so much easier, so, so much easier uh, when you're able to tune into that voice 
without your deck of cards in your hand, then you can start to really follow that guidance. And that would be my fourth thing. Okay, so this is gonna be three. But this is my fourth thing. When you get the guidance, pay attention to it, do something with it. Because so many of us, again, I've done this too, have been in situations where we've received guidance from working with cards or getting a reading or however we've received this guidance. And we've said, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> or, oh yeah, definitely, I definitely need to do that. I definitely need to think about that. And then we just kind of carry on life as usual. But the real magic happens when we go from, okay, I'm just pulling cards or I'm just pulling a card every day just because it's fun, just because I feel like it's um, connecting me in some way to the universe and seeing what the universe has to say every day, just a real quick card pull. When we go from that to, okay, now I'm sitting down and I'm really getting serious about this and I'm really like, okay, wow, like this is my, this is my Wi-Fi to the universe. This is my Wi-Fi to the divine. This is amazing. This is cool. And we start working with it in that way. And then we start getting the guidance as we work with the cards to leave an unhealthy relationship, to go for a job that we really, really want, our dream job, you know, to work towards that. All of these different things that can start to kind of come up and come through as guidance in our readings, we then have a choice of, are we going to listen to that or not? Are we going to listen to that inner voice or not? Are we going to listen to our guides and angels or not? So the fourth tip is to take that, take that information, take what's coming through in your readings and act on it and use it. And the more that you do that, the more that you'll get more guidance and you'll be showing your next step and your next step and your next step and you know who knows where you'll end up. Uh, I have this story that I tell all the time, you may have already heard this, so apologies if this is an old story for you, but I started to get the guidance once I, once I started to really kind of work on my energy, I started to get this guidance to start a blog called New Age Hipster <laughs> and to share my spiritual uh, my spiritual practices and the stuff that was coming up for me on the spiritual journey. And I resisted and ignored that voice for a while and eventually I thought, okay, well, what's the worst that can happen? And this is something you can think when you're getting guidance and you don't know for sure if this is really your guidance, is it, are you just making it up? Are you misreading it? The best way to figure it out is to take action on it and see what happens. And I, I always like to ask, I even do this now, I always like to just ask, what is the worst thing that can happen if I follow this guidance? And that's kind of like a weird take, I know, but it's like, can anything bad happen? Because maybe, you know, you're worried that, oh, well, if I do this, what, something bad might happen. Um, but with this, you know, starting a blog, I was like, well, what's the worst that can happen? I spend a bit of time setting up a blog, no one reads it, people don't like it. Uh, you know, it was kind of like, okay, it feels pretty low stakes. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be the end of the world if I start a blog and no one likes it, no one reads it, right? Um, so I started the blog and the blog turned into a place where I started to share uh, my readings and then it turned into my business. And that all happened because I listened to the little voice that said, new age hipster, start a blog. And so we always have the choice whether we you know, ignore that voice or we listen to it and we take action on it. And I'm here today with my new book. This is my third, well, it's my third spiritual book. It's my sixth book, um, sixth published book, plus my two Oracle decks. And I wouldn't have done any of this if I'd ignored that guidance. So when you get your guidance, ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen if I follow this? Is anyone gonna get hurt? No, um, could I end up looking like an idiot? Maybe, it might be worth it. You know, and weigh, weigh it up, weigh it up. And ask your guides too for like, you know, ask them for the low, the low stakes, the low risk, <laughs> uh, the low risk guidance. Ask them for those assignments, for those next steps that are actually pretty low risk to begin with. 
And then you're not taking like wild leaps of faith, you know, like starting a blog. Um, in some ways, I guess it was a wild leap of faith, but in other ways, it was like a Sunday afternoon where I sat down and started a blog, you know. So that went off on a bit of a tangent, but, um, you know, this is ultimately, this is what it's about, you know. This is a question to ask yourself, why do you want to read cards? Why do you want to have this ability? It's probably because you want, really want to live your best and highest life here in this lifetime, right? And you want to have a tool that can help you to connect with your inner knowing, highest wisdom, that can help you on your path every day. And that's what card reading can do for you. It can absolutely be that tool. It can absolutely be, you know, the, the, the phone line to the divine. So good luck with your readings. I hope this has helped you. There are so many things. This was just a couple of things. There are so many other things to think about and, uh, you know, progress with as you, as you journey with your card reading practice. But these are some of my favorite things to kind of begin with, because I think if you get these three things, if you know how to prepare your energy, if you know how to ask a good question and you know who you're asking, your whole card reading game can change. It can just, that those three things can have a massive, massive impact. So I'm really excited to hear from you how it goes. I'd love to hear in the comments too, like what are some of your non-negotiables when it comes to when you sit down and and read your cards, what do you make sure that you absolutely do? And if you would like to grab a copy of the Oracle Card Companion, the book comes out in October internationally. So check your Amazon, wherever you buy books, you can pre-order it now. Um, otherwise, keep your eyes out. It is such a fun book. There's actually photos of me in the book. <laughs> which I have a lot of mixed feelings about, but I'm going to talk about that in a different video. For now, enjoy these tips. I hope they serve and support you. I hope that they take your card reading to the next level and I'm just sending you so much love and I'll see you next time.